Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with the legendary T.G. Shepard, and I'm so excited that you're taking your time to talk to me this morning. How are you? Uh, I am fine, Missy, but what, I mean, wow. I mean, you, uh, a legend? I, I yeah. look at Jones and Haggard and people like that as a legend, but yeah, you're very kind. Thank no, you. you you are too, and, and I have to tell you that you have so many amazing, loyal fans who would agree with me. And in fact, one of one of the center stage team, um, one of our girls, Laura, I told her I was getting to talk to you today, and she about died. She was just <laughs> freaking out. So, no, sir, you are. <laughs> I, I definitely. Yeah, thank you. Well, you're very, you're very kind of. I've, I've never, for some reason, I've never got used to hearing my name tagged <laughs> to that particular, uh, you know, adjective. I, I right. just. I know, but I mean, it makes you feel good. It's great for the ego, but, right? But wow, no, that's that's a compliment. Thank you. You're very welcome. And and you have so much going on that you've you've had in your career that I could probably spend ten hours talking to you. But um, I know you're busy, so we'll we'll keep it short. But twenty one number one hits. What is that like for you? That is huge. <laughs> Well, Missy, I never thought I would have 21 number one hits. I, I kept thinking in my career, if I could just have like one or two number one records, I would feel like that I had had, had done something or had a career. And so all these years later to have amassed that many of them, I have to sometimes pinch myself. I really do. I, I just happen to be at the right place at the right time with the right song. And Absolutely. In, li in life, that happens. In life, in life, when the stars line up for you and everything is right, the magic happens. And I just, my life's been very magical. Well, it, it, it definitely has, but you've also been a part of making magic happen in so many other lives. And, you know, that's through the, the charity work that you do. And I just want to thank you on a personal level. When I saw the little girl with you up on stage um, doing the lighting at, the, um, at Graceland, the Christmas lighting just recently, I was I was brought to tears because I have a son. We spent so much time in the hospital, in and out of the hospital, Children's Hospital of Orange County in California. And the first right. three years of his life, we were mostly in the hospital off and on. And so to see your work and, and helping children and not just children, I mean, you do so much charity work. To me, is just, it's just, it needs to be applauded. And I think that that is just an incredible, you know, I don't know, characteristics well, of who you are and why you deserve so much <laughs> positive. Well, you know, I, I think in, in our business or in any business, I, I think if you're successful at what you do more than the norm, I, I do think you owe, I think you should pay it forward. I think you owe something back. I don't think you can just take and take and take in your life without giving back. Yeah. And with me, getting a chance to do charity work, uh, and, and to have her with me that night, and of course she had been uh, through St. Jude, and mm -hmm. and had so much, so much, just to have her with me that night made my night uh, when we lit the the, the lights up at Graceland. But I think it's an I think it's an obligation that every performer should take to give back a little bit of what they take. Absolutely, absolutely. And that little girl, her name was Alexis, right? She yes. She just looked <laughs> she so excited. Dog. And when she when she like helped you flip that switch, man, she gave it a huge shove, and I was like, oh, that's so cute. She was just she was a doll, and I was so excited to see her up there. It was fun. Well, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of hurt in our world right now, and, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of children, as well as adults, but there's a lot of children hurting. And I'm a, I mean, hey, I'm a sucker for a kid every time. I mean, really and truly. I love kids, and it just uh, it, to be able to make someone's day like that made my day. Absolutely. Well, and I mean, you could just you could just see it on your face, and you could just hear the crowd and the people that were taking the YouTube video. It was just it was so much fun. It was it was so much fun to watch, and I'm I'm glad I actually got to see that. And and I mean, that was so recent. You did that, you know, just a couple of weeks ago. But so yep. the other the other thing um, that I wanted to to talk to you about was, you know, you have some amazing stories with Elvis and you have this friendship that you that you got to develop with him and a personal relationship that I think most people, you know, would absolutely love to hear all about all the time. Because you constantly get inundated 
with questions about that. I mean, the man gave you a tour bus. Who who does that? <laughs> it's crazy. Well, you know, I get a lot of questions about Elvis, but I think the one question I get more than any is, what was he really like? Mm-hmm. And I can only tell you and everyone listening or reading that Elvis was um, was the real deal. He was one of the most unique individuals that I have ever been uh, with. And, and as I said the night that I turned the lights on at Graceland two weeks ago, every, I spent a lot of years with Elvis, but every time that I was with him, I really and truly drank it in because I really knew that I was in the presence of greatness. I mean, really, he was a great guy, no ego, uh, just a, a guy who still uh, had was so thankful for what had happened to him. Yeah. And uh, and every day, uh, getting a chance to hear him talk about how lucky he was and how blessed he was, that shows uh, what kind of person he really was. What a, what an incredible guy and a great friend. Right. Well, and for me and, and a lot of your fans, they need to be thanking him for helping to encourage you to, to quit promoting <laughs> others at RCA and to step out on your own and have confidence, like, like it says in your bio. Like, that... To have somebody believe in you that much, what was that like for you? Well, you know, when he gave me the tour bus, you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Um, that gave me the confidence. I, I said to myself, if he thinks enough of me as a friend and as hopefully a, a would-be talent, if he thinks enough of me to give me a tour bus, I really and truly need to take this serious. So mm-hmm. it, it really gave me the confidence, Missy, to to jump out there and really make a go for it. And uh, I I've always and I always will be indebted to him for believing me, in me enough to give me the confidence to really right. push and, and work hard at the career. Well, I, I'm, I'm so glad he did it. Like I said, so, so are so many of your fans. And, you know, you have one of the the smoothest voices in country music. I, I absolutely love your voice. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it just, it, I, I can't pinpoint it. Like, you know, you, you are just along the lines of your legends. You know, the, the Merle and the, you know, Johnny Cash. And everything. There's just, but you're so different and unique in your sound that I just, I'm like, wow, you know, we need more of you. We need more of you in country music. <laughs> country music has taken a different direction, but not right. everybody has followed that direction, right? I mean, you have fans that love it all. You have fans that can't stand right. it. You have fans sure. that absolutely love it. But there's, so many fans that want to hear more of your style of music and who you are. And I, I think performing, you have such a, a great way of, you know, performing for your fans on stage and um, developing that and how to do that on stage is something I heard recently. That Well, oh, go ahead. I, I really do. I think that there has been, you're right, there is a return to a lot of people. Uh, mm-hmm. to the more traditional classic artists of my era because they're missing that from uh, music now. Right. I, I embrace I embrace all music because I, I know how hard it is in the, oh, as an artist to, to succeed. So I embrace and encourage and respect any artist as a career. Uh, although the music may have changed a, a long way, there there is a, there is a return uh, by a lot of the fans to our music. And I look out now at the audiences and they're getting larger again. Mm-hmm. They're getting younger. They're getting younger again. Because one good thing that's happening is that the artist of today whose music may be not necessarily what we call country, they're driving a new audience into country that's turning on to the classic country exactly. artists like myself. Exactly. And so we, we owe them a debt of gratitude also for bringing the new fans in. And so, yeah, there there is a uh, there is a return right now and a thirst for the music of the 80s and 90s, and that's great for me because it enables me to go out there and work the road just constantly, which is great. Absolutely, and you know, you do have those, you know, the the stage presence that, you know, some people just never get, and you you develop that I think very early on, you know, how to how to be able to perform for your audience and engage with them in a way that a lot of people don't. 
um, you you were the performer first, in in my opinion, just from what I've seen. You mastered that really well, and I I think your fans have responded to it, you know, all of this time because well, of that. Well, I, you know, it, when you first start off in your career, Misty, you you're a journeyman to the trade. You don't really know as much uh, about your career and what to do. Right. And, and and after you're in it a while, you 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 learn. You learn your craft. Mm -hmm. You hopefully get better at it. You learn what works best for you on stage. Uh, you learn what works best for you in the studio vocally. So it's a growing process. I think the longer you're in it, hopefully the better you become because mm -hmm. you you're, you're constantly learning more about your trade. And uh, but no, I, I'm I'm I love performing. Um, somebody asked me why do I love it so much because that is the one place in my life that I have total control. Yeah. Each day is an hour, hour and a half on stage uh, to where it's where I live. That's that's my little area of my life that I have control of, and I can do anything with it I want. And it's just a blast. That's great. I I love that. I love hearing that, and it's and it's so true. And you know, when I talk to so many artists now, um, the new and up and coming artists and independent artists, one of the things that we always talk about is that. When you're an independent artist, you have more creative control, and that's something yes. that I think a lot of people are, are thirsting for. So when you're on stage and you're commanding the audience and you're just doing your thing and you're up there being yourself, that's got to be one of the most amazing feelings ever. I, I would have to agree. I think that would be great. There's no, there's no other place in the world that you can feel the magic like that except on stage. There, there is a. I can only tell you that when the performer's on stage and the lighting is right and the sound is right and the audience is with you, it's almost as if when you're on stage and you move your hand through the air, you can see a a path that your hand made. It, it's just absolutely magical. Um, I wish everyone could experience that. It, it's it, there's no there's no words to describe that feeling when everything is just right on the show. That's that's great. That's great. Now, do you have do you have a huge schedule coming up? Are there a lot of shows that you have, or or anything you have coming up that fans can come and, and check you out and, and see you for those who haven't had the opportunity yet? Well, we had a huge year this year, and we I I just finished my last days last week uh, for the year, okay. and we start back on tour in January the fourteenth. And we announced a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, we announced the Party Tap Tour, which is the celebration of the 35th, 36th year uh, of uh, Party Tap going number one. So we titled our tour Party Tap Tour. Oh, nice. And we're, just, we're now just listing dates on tgshepherd.com. You can go and take a look at all the dates that is on there for this year. And then at the very end, you can see in January of 17 uh, what is starting for the party time. Looks like a very, very big year. Nice. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. And, and I also, also want to mention to people that I am so huge on social media. I, I really and truly, I tweet a lot. And I have uh, people who hopefully will follow me on Twitter at, at TG Shepherd Music or T.G. Shepherd on uh, Facebook, right. because that is a great tool to be able to reach the masses with whatever news you may have at the moment goes out instantly. And and it's just incredible to have that tool to, to work with. It, it is, and you, you don't realize how far one tweet goes and how many impressions it makes. I'm, oh, wow. I'm floored all the time. Like when one of my articles got retweeted by Cowboy Troy and then Florida Georgia Line, I was like, oh, my gosh. It's just and the amount of people that see you and see your work, it's just, it's, it's really, it's, the sky's the limit. With, with Well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Last week, I went to the Charlie Daniels Jam, and uh, Luke Bryan was there. <laughs> yes, I saw that. And and um, I had never known that his first concert that he ever went to at eight years old was when his mom took him to see Jerry Lee Lewis and myself. And he tweeted that to his seven or eight million <laughs> followers on, on Twitter. And all of a sudden, my Twitter page and Facebook page <laughs> blew up. I mean, uh, but yeah, it, it's a great tool to have uh, at, at this day and age to get the word out about what you're doing. Absolutely. 
have to. And that was a great picture of you too, by the way, because I I actually follow you on on Twitter, and um, I, I I saw that picture and I was like, that is just you guys were just so happy in that picture. It was it was great to see. <laughs> But but one of the tweets, I have to tell you, I was so sad to hear, you know, everybody with the Gatlinburg fires. Um, oh, yeah. it was awful, awful. And My, uh, your old restaurant. Yeah, go ahead. Your old restaurant at north of the border. Um, I don't know what it what it's called now, but to, to see your tweet about that and how it was destroyed, I just it felt so bad. My home that I had there for years was the big lodge. I had a beautiful uh, ten bedroom bed and breakfast lodge that I lived in called Moon Mountain Lodge, and I heard yesterday that uh, someone told me it had also burned. Oh. So a lot of but a lot of memories burned. But there, there we you know there's so many people up there who are hurting right. that it just absolutely is devastating for them because they don't know where to turn. Uh, their neighborhoods don't look the same. Right. They've lost they've lost pets. They've lost family. They've lost friends. They've lost everything they have, mm-hmm. and I I salute I salute Dolly Parton, but because she jumped out yes, she and was the first to do something, and I understand that there is a a, a telethon that's coming next week, and I I'm excited to hopefully be part of that oh, great. and um, to raise more money for those people up there. We're we're proud here in Tennessee. Like when we had the floods here in Tennessee years ago, and and everything was flooded. You know, we didn't look for any national assistance. We just all dug in ourselves and brought it back. Right. And Tennesseans are proud people. We're so proud. That's it. And I, I am so excited. I finally get to move there in three weeks. I will be finally living back in Nashville area, and I just, I can't wait. <laughs> it is, you know, right. I don't know how often you've been to California, and no disrespect to California, I just do not fit in here any longer. I might have been born and raised here, but this is just, it's time to go. <laughs> well, now, I am, I'm excited that you're coming here. Now, you have my phone number on yes. the other end of your phone right there. So you hang on to that. That's my cell number. When you get to town, you call me. Absolutely. I mean it. All right. I mean it. And I, you know what? I was telling Tommy, who's the co-founder of Center Stage, um, we need to have you and, and, and your wife on, on a, on a, on camera interview. We need to, like, have a really awesome this conversation, have you guys both play some music? She's a singer too, right? I mean, she, you guys are. You guys yeah, are, Kelly. Yeah, yeah, you guys are amazing. So, and, well, you know, we, we, we had a, we, our, our love story is an amazing love story. And, you know, we, we went to see Vince and Amy's Christmas show last night and they're good friends of ours and theirs is a great love story. Aww. And, uh, Garth and Trish Fisher are friends and their, their love story is great. But Kelly and I have a very unique love story that needs to be shared on camera. So yes. when you get ready, you let us know. Oh, you absolutely. Know. We need to do this. I was telling Tommy this morning, I was like, I really want them to on camera because you guys are so, I love seeing how you support her and how you're posting her. But you just, it's its beautiful to see. And, and that you, you present your love story through your social media. And it's just, for somebody like me, I just, I'm like, oh. I love it. It's just, you know, that those are the kind well, of I, things that the world needs more of. We we crave it. It's positive. <laughs> well, you know, I I uh, I am very blessed to have Kelly Lang as a wife. She is an incredible human being, a great mom, a great friend, a great daughter, a great sister. Okay. But she is just an incredible human being, and we've we've been through the fire. You know, I mean, she's twelve years out now from cancer, oh, and so I. I our love story is a very deep, mm-hmm. deep love story because of cancer, and that needs to be told. So, any yeah. like I say, anytime you're ready, turn the camera on. We'll we'll give it to you. Absolutely. All right. Well, then you expect my phone call after the first of the year because you got it. I will. As soon as I'm there, yeah, I I can't wait. You guys are incredible, and I can't wait to actually, you know, see you face to face. And I'm 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 a hugger, so be prepared. So I'm just gonna give you a big giant hug. But thank you again so much for taking the time to talk to me today. And um, no, no, I, thank I appreciate you. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh! Well, I appreciate you, and and I want to. I really, truly want to wish you a merry, merry Christmas and happy New Year. Oh, same thing. We, you. our country, our country right now is in a in in uh, is really volatile. Um, there's a lot of a lot going on in our country, but we all have each other. 
Absolutely. And this time of year is the, is the time of year that we all come together and we love and hold each other. And uh, so, yeah, I, I just I really hope you have a great holiday season. And it's my pleasure to talk to you today. Well, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you guys as well. And, and I feel the same way. And I often tell people, you know what, it starts with us. It starts with everybody. It starts with us, ourselves, in the mirror. You know, be positive and, and share it and, and spread it and just keep it going. So thank you so much. And, yes, Merry Christmas to you guys. And I can't wait Merry to Christmas. see you on camera next time. And uh, until then. Either, and you call me when you get I, down. I will. I promise. I will. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. You guys have a good day. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. You too. Mm, bye. bye.